Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Case. Uh, we'll also have a few people up here talking about specifics further on these slides. Um, this is tool chain hardening features uh, that are they are generally uh, applicable to uh, outside the tunnel, but these slides in particular are focused more on what the tunnel needs. Um, the first step always is to sort of look back at what we talked about last year. Um, these are sort of the relevant things that we were at. Um, and then we'll go back and forth probably between the two. Um, so this year, I've added another column uh, for Rust. So mm -hmm. we've got a separate compiler in a way. Um, so we've got GCC, Rust. I'll talk about that more in the next slide. It's not what we call attention to is we've got. We were talking about last year, the dash s for bus arrays is done. Yeah. That, that's been taken care of across the board. Um, and the, the more exciting attribute, uh, we were talking, we, we called it element count last year, so I changed on the slide and made it here. The counted by attribute is now an active project. So it will be fast. Backerbench CFI, the shadow call stack. So I'll take a step forward to Rust. So one of the major concerns we've got is a uh, class of facts, sort of being called a cross line. So we've got, uh, let's say, the old with Rust, and now producing the binary output from the Rust compiler. Um, and those things may not have the same. As an example, something like control flow integrity. If you part it all C, but not the rust pieces, then the C part can use a new binary output that rust produce as is. Um, and I, uh, a bunch of stuff has already been mentioned, but I'm just calling out the zero in column registers, the randomized structure supported with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the RAM struct work is needed uh, pretty quickly because if you try to build, you know, uh, with some kind of structures, obviously anything for us is going to melt down very quickly because things aren't in the right order. Um, the kernel CFI, the the forward uh, forward CFI, is in progress. Uh, it might already be landing uh, landed. I was uh, Ramon was talking about this, but you can check those slides. Um, it, the details are on slide fifty eight of that very large deck that's linked there. Um, and we need to look at how counted by needs you know needs to be uh, added to to rust um an interesting spot that is a little strange is for arithmetic overflow handling um right now there we have sanitizers on c code that can check for arithmetic overflow uh and they'll generate a ub san trap or warning um and rust has its own uh math overflow handling they don't really they don't really resolve to the same thing, um, so we need to try to figure that out. Um, moving on, so what we what we we have parity on dash f strict flex arrays, and just as a reminder, this is to uh, for the tra any trailing array in a structure, um, GCC and Clang treated as a fake flexible array, no matter what its size was defined as, um, and this led to very weird situations where there was basically ambiguous meaning to the code that people were writing and the compiler had to stay pretty hands off it was like i don't know if this is a real array or a fake array or whatever um so that that's been finished that was in gcc 13 and fully finished in clang 16. um most of it was in 15 but we need the stuff the kernel depended on uh started in clang 16. Um, and this gets us um, 
unambiguous handling in the bounds sanitizer, so dealing with array bounds checking, um, and in uh, the, the, the internal built-in uh, for being able to ask about the array size, uh, which is used in Fortify source, like the, the mem copy and stir copy, all that family of functions. Um, when they're when they're used, they sort of interrogate their their argument to see is this an array, how big is it, et cetera. And if if before this, it wouldn't be able to enforce anything for trailing arrays. So that's been solved, and that was enabled in six point five. Um, so the stack protector guard location. This is basically. Uh, the sort of old, old stack protector was a global canary. Uh, so if you could get the canary in one thread, you could apply it in an attack in a separate thread. So having um, per process canaries was, uh, you know, has been a long term fix that we've gotten. Uh, we actually had two implementations on x86. Um, we don't have this yet on RISC-V or PowerPC. Um, we've got an open bug in Clang, or I should clarify, uh, Clang doesn't have this for RISC-V and PowerPC. Um, it exists in GCC. Uh, there's an open bug for RISC-V. Um, there isn't a bug for PowerPC, um, so that's why I have a question mark after the needed. Like, is anyone paying attention to this? Um, I'm, I'm hoping that IBM could uh, get someone to take a look at this, um, if that's something they care about. Um, so looking at uh, forward edge CFI, we, I've, I've always split these slides into like, we've got hardware support for this kind of thing and software support. The hardware support tends to be much more coarse grained, uh, you know, saying you have a function pointer, you're gonna make an indirect call and you can jump to where? Uh, for hardware support, this basically says you can jump to any function entry, uh, which is very nice in the sense that you can't do inter-function gadget you know, I can't jump into the middle of a function, but it doesn't really stop you from calling whatever you want. Uh, it's nice, but it's not very fine grain. Um, the software control, this is the, the KCFI implementation um, that we're using. Um, that gives us a per function prototype. Um, so only functions of the same, you can only, from an indirect call, you can only call into other functions of a matching prototype that was expected. Um, so it's encoded, the, you know, the C prototype ends up being encoded in a hash that's checked in the binary output. Um, Clang has this, uh, GCC still needs this. Um, it was pretty important. There was an earlier effort to do this for ARM64, um, but that person's not working on it anymore. Um, it would be great if someone could uh, pick this up. Um, and the, the reason this is important is really the uh, attacking function pointers and gadget analysis is pretty well totally automated. Like this is a solved problem on the attacker's side. So if you gain function control, you have total access to the kernel without really doing any manual work at all. Um, so locking down this, uh, getting this exploit mitigation in place is pretty pretty powerful, or at least raises the cost of exploitation quite a bit. Um, backward edge is the return path. So this is corrupting your, your stack return addresses so that you can redirect returns. Um, uh, hardware support, uh, we're, we're pretty good on, on, the, on the kernel side. Like this was supported by both compilers for, for quite some time now. Um, kernel support finally landed for user space. Um, the in-kernel use of shadow stacks, you know, hardware shadow stacks has not really been explored. And that's mostly because uh, people have been tearing their hair out over all the weird CPU mitigations. Like there's, you know, in some configurations, there's a single return instruction in the entire kernel image because you have to jump to it first and do cleanup. And it's kind of nightmarish to deal with that. Um, so no one's really stepped up to look at, can we add shadow stack support um, on, on x86? Um, ARM64 ha has protection for this using, using PAC. Uh, this is working fine. Uh, on the software side, uh, there is a method of doing a KCFI-like uh, return hash checking um, that, again, is not yet in Clang or GCC. No one's stepped up to do it. Um, but there is, on ARM64, there is a shadow call stack, which is sort of emulates the hardware call stack as well. So 
these are areas it would be nice for us to take some next steps in, but um, given the hardware support, uh, things are looking a lot better. And as far as the tool chain, everything we have for supporting hardware is there. Um, so now I'll get to probably what is the bulk of this. Um, so looking at uh, pounds checking our flexible array members. So if you've got a struct like this that has, um, has no fixed size, and you're gonna allocate a bunch of space for it, um, there wasn't any way to check this. Uh, and so the idea was to add this attribute that says counted by and gives the hint to the compiler that, hey, the size of this array is defined by this other member. You know, how, how many elements we have is defined by, uh, you know, in, in this example, the items uh, member in the, in the object. And then this logic gets wired up into the array bound sanitizer and the built-in dynamic object size uh, built in um, so that it says, oh, instead of doing a compile, like instead of hard coding a, is this index larger than whatever the hard coded number was in the array, now it says, I'm gonna actually load that member and do a comparison against the index. So um, it's a little bit more work at runtime, but it's actually <clears throat> able to do it at all, which before this, it wasn't able to. Um, so I think the next slide, oops, I went too far. <laughs> I'll hand it over to King, who's talking about what's happening on GCC. Stairs over there. Yeah, so, <clears throat> sorry. So the current plan for GCC to implement the counted by feature, yeah, actually we divide the whole task into five uh, items. So one, two, three, five, four, five. So the first three, uh, that's, yeah, the first three, is we, we plan to imp uh, implement into the GCC 14 and the four and five, we plan to uh, implement into GCC 15. But uh, due to the review process, during the review process in GCC 14 for the first three items, um, we found a, a major issue in the patch uh, submitted. Uh, thanks a lot for Sedish and uh, Karas, yeah, for identifying this major uh, data dependence issue. Uh, so with this uh, data dependence issue, we redesign, we have a re redesign to the uh, whole, whole task. And then we can we have to uh, postpone the, all the tasks into the GCC 15. So that's a current uh, uh, status. So for the five items, the, the first one, we need, we need to provide the uh, attribute first, and then we need to use the attribute uh, to the consumer of this attribute. That's uh, the first consumer is the built-in dynamic object size. Uh, um, and the second one is the uh, uh, sanitizer, the bounce uh, sanitizer. So after these three items, we will try to improve the built-in dynamic object size to uh, estimate the, to use the attribute for the whole, whole subject. Right now we can only use it for the sub, sub object. And then after that, we try to uh, issue warning when the user violates the uh, user requirements. So we'll explain a little bit uh, more in details in the later slides. Um, so the I'll explain a little bit in the missing data dependence issue in the next two slides. So so this uh, identified a uh, missing data dependence issue. So in this uh, small example, we can see the structure A has two fields, and the second field buffer uh, is a flexible array member, and uh, it has an attribute counted by the 
the size given by the uh, the first uh, member, the first field of the same structure. Uh, so in the routine four, in the routine four, the line seven and the line eight, you can see the line seven, the size is uh, get initialized, uh, and then at at line uh, line eight, the we call a built-in dynamic object size, and uh, to try to estimate the object buffer, this subject, what's the size of this subject. So in this call, built-in dynamic object size, we try to use the object size information in this call, but this in implicit use information is missing in the source code and also in the intermediate language. So this missing data dependence, uh, because there's no data dependence, uh, compiler don't know the line eight depend on seven. So compiler is free to reorder these two statement and also can apply some other incorrect transformation to hoist or CSE, those kind of thing, and make a wrong transformation. So this is a, a major issue currently identified and uh, the compiler need to resolve this data dependence to represent this missing data dependence in the uh, intermediate language to prevent the wrong transformation. So the next, so after extensive discussing uh, inside the GCC community, we finally agreed on a solution. So that solution is which we will introduce a new GCC internal function to try to carry this data dependence and uh, pass the data dependence into the intermediate language. And then the compiler know there's a data dependence between these two, then compiler will not do the wrong transformation. So the the name of this new GCC internal function is access with size. So in this uh, internal function, we have two arguments, the object, the pointer, the reference to the object and reference to the size. So, and then we will use this uh, internal function to replace every reference to a flexible array member field that uh, has uh, counted by attribute. Then, yeah, you can see the previously, the seven lines, line seven and line eight, the lines, line seven, line eight, yeah. And uh, now we will add one more line between the line seven and line eight. Yeah, we will change the, the reference to the buffer with the, uh, internal function call, that's internal function, will connect the buffer and the size together and then carry the data dependence into the uh, data flow of this uh, program. Then the compiler will see the uh, complete picture of the data flow information. So then we can resolve the uh, missing data dependence issue. And uh, with this solution, we also can, um, combine several other attributes uh, for the uh, object size information together. And then, yeah, uh, the implementation of this area will be more consistent. So that's a very good uh, design, I think, yeah. So I think we will resolve we will change the current uh, patch with this new internal function. And because the introduction of this internal function, the intermediate language, the, yeah, they are, will change uh, a little bit more. So there will be, uh, there will be quite a lot impact to the compiler optimization. So right now GCC is in the, last uh, stage of the GCC 14. So put, put in this big change will be a little dangerous. So we'll decide to delay the uh, checking of this patch into GCC 15 in the early stage of GCC 15. 
So the counted by attribute, so what's the user interface uh, provided in GCC? So we will provide a counted by attributes which will attach to the FAM field. And uh, that attribute will have one parameter. That parameter will be another field uh, in the same structure. So that field will tell the flexible array member have the count number of the uh, array. So that's a bound information to provide uh, to the compiler the how big this array is. And uh, there are two requirements uh, to the user uh, to use this uh, counted by attribute. So the first one is very, yeah. So you have to initialize this uh, count uh, field before the first reference to the array. So that's the first one. And the second uh, requirement is the P array. So that buffer uh, has at least P count number of the elements available uh, all the time. Otherwise, uh, the array checker, the array sanitizer and the um, dynamic built-in uh, object size will have undefined behavior. I will have two small examples in a later slide to explain why these two uh, requirements need to be met. Yeah. And uh, there, there, are, there is one important feature with this uh, interface. After the, uh, the design change, right now we can support the dynamic array for the flexible array member in TCC. Well, what means that is, so this is a small example. The P count equal to va value one, then reference one. Then the P count is changed to another value, then reference two. So that's a sequence. So the with the new design, the reference one will use the value one as the bound of the P array. And the reference two can, will use the value two as the bound of the P array. So the uh, P array, this buffer, the size can be dyna dynamically adjusted during the uh, program. So that's a feature needed by the kernel. Yeah, so I think this, uh, we, can, we can support this feature, fully support this feature, yeah. So this is a small example uh, to show how GCC can use the counted by attribute uh, to support the uh, array, array bound checker and the built-in dynamic object size. So this uh, the first structure annotated is a structure with the array and the count. So co connected with the counted by and then we, we the, the 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 routine alloc buffer alloc buffer so that one will uh, malloc uh, size of the uh, memory assigned to the counter p which has the structure annotated uh, type and then we initialize the count field with the number of the element to that array. So this is uh, uh, the header file, yeah. And then we, yeah, this uh, first thing is we use the counted by in the bound sanitizer. So uh, in this main uh, routine, you can see the, the P annotated array 11, that one, because we allocate only 10 elements. So the 11 element will be out of bound. <laughs> Outbound access. So before the counted by attribute, uh, we cannot uh, report the outbound uh, uh, information. We cannot report this uh, error to the user with the uh, uh, sanitizer, bound sanitizer. But after we add the counted by attribute, uh, the GCC can do this uh, without any issue. Yeah. So that's a uh, uh, use in the. Bound sanitizer. 
And similarly, we can also use the counted by attribute uh, in the dynamic object size. So you can see the we allocate 10 element, uh, elements uh, to this uh, uh, flexible array member, but uh, previously without the uh, counted by attribute, the when we try to estimate the the flexible array, the size, we cannot get any information. Uh, but now with the counted by attribute, we can report the uh, size, the subject size uh, uh, correctly uh, when using the counted by information. So that's the two example how to use uh, use the counted by attribute in the compiler to uh, yeah. Could that not be a uh, compiler time? Well, which one? The error there. Could that not be reported at compile time? Uh, compile time, no. Because, uh, com because that counted by, counted by information uh, will not be, it, it's a, a variable during the compiler time. Only in, in the uh, only in the runtime, it will know the variable size, the variable variable number. For, for this specific example, uh, it then get reported at compile time. But then, if you imagine like a more general purpose, there will be those that count. Yes. Uh, in, in this case, the allocation is visible. Like, in no, the no, it's not visible <laughs> because yeah, because allocal allocal yeah. buffer is uh, non in line. Yeah, I missed to tell. Yeah, this is the previous header file. So you can see the alloc buffer that uh, function has the attribute no inline. So that's a, I added intentionally to prevent the inline. So then, then in this function, the alloc buffer cannot be inlined. So then you cannot see. Yeah, if you can inline it, then you can see the number yeah, from the alloc. From the ma malloc, yeah. But now I try to show, yeah, it's not okay. cannot be aligned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, so the yeah, so all the alloc of buffer that one is no in line. So I add that uh, uh, attribute. So compiler cannot in line it. Then in the routine main, you will not see the alloc size. Uh, for the buffer, so you can only get the information from the attribute uh, attribute uh, counted by, yeah. But counted by that information can only be seen during runtime. During the compilation time, it's a variable. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's something that we can. Okay, okay. Mm. Will this feature work if the array is not in line? Uh, uh, you mean the, the, the array is not in that structure. Is that another pointer? Oh. Um, yeah, we, I think we are considering to extend the counted by attribute to generate pointer later. But at this moment, uh, with the, that, fit, that counted by attribute only apply to the uh, flexible array member. But th that's the next step. We'll try to extend it. OK, so does that answer your question? OK. Yeah, so with with the uh, yeah, current uh, patch, we can support the, we use the counted by attribute to support the dynamic uh, uh, object size for the sub object only. Uh, 
but uh, a further improvement will try to use the counted by attribute for the whole object size, uh, for the dynamic object size. So the reason is, yeah, so the, the is, is, it, is the example clear from your, I cannot see it's very clear. It's clear, right? You can read it? Okay. So the left side, so there are two, two, two columns, the so left side and the, and the right side. So left side is show why in general, given a structure with a fixed size training array, why we cannot uh, use the size of the type to decide the whole object size. Uh, the reason is because, because the, the pointer P, the pointer P also it, it's a look fixed. The pointer P, uh, even though it's a uh, size of the pound T is a structure fixed, but you cannot guarantee that pointer will uh, point to a single object of that uh, uh, structure because the, it might point to an array of that uh, structure. So in general, we cannot uh, use the uh, size of that structure to decide the, the pound T of that pointer P. So yeah, so as, yes. So, but for the structure with uh, FAM, it's different because structure with FAM cannot be an uh, element of an array. It only can be a single object. So uh, for a P point to a structure with a FAM structure, you can guarantee the structure uh, that pointer will point a single object. So we can use the type information to decide the whole object size. Then we can use the attribute uh, counted by to decide the whole object size of the uh, structure. Yeah. So this idea uh, currently is not uh, implemented in the GCC, and we will add it later as an improvement. And thanks for Sedish for yeah for this idea. And another further improvement is uh, we need to uh, issue warning when the user requirement are violated. So there are two requirements, as I mentioned previously, in the user interface. So one is the in you, you, user need to initialize the p count. Uh, before the first reference to the P array. So the, this is a small example. Yeah, you can see the P array is uh, referenced before the P count is assigned. So, so even though the size of the P array is only N, but the P array ref reference, reference is N plus one. So that's clearly it's out of bound, uh, out of bound access. But since you assign that uh, count uh, after the out of bound, then the compiler will not know the bound size uh, during the uh, reference of the PRA before that uh, initialization. So the out of bound uh, out of bound error will not be captured by the compiler. So this is the first uh, first one uh, first requirement. And the first warning, and the, the second requirement is uh, the P array uh, has at, at least the P count number of elements available all the time. So the example here is show, yeah, we we allocate n element for the P array, but we assign n plus size bump uh, as its counter. Then when the because n is size size ah then the p array reference n plus one should be a uh, out of bound but because the count information the n plus size bump is bigger than the n plus one so the compiler will not report the out of bound uh, error uh, so that's 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 also violate the the requirement. So I hope I hope this two example is clear to 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 show you why we need these two requirements. Yeah. So 
then we we will add one compilation time and one runtime uh, option. But the name is just uh, yeah. Uh, we we will not decide the name yet for the for the option. That's we'll decide later to catch this kind of error during compilation time or runtime. So this is future work. Future work will first we will add the counted by attribute for flexible array member first. That's uh, we will make it into GCC 15. Then after that, we'll try to extend the attribute to the general pointers. Yeah, so then we might add some more attributes later if needed. Yeah, so then we will in integrate the array bound information for FAM and the general pointers into the language syntax and type system. That's also in our discussing during the GCC community. So our final goal is try to uh, add uh, this uh, bound information into the type system uh, and make the C more uh, type safe. Yeah, that's our final goal. But uh, Integrate this kind of information into the language syntax is a long way to go. Yeah, so we will try to do it uh, later after we get success with the uh, attributes first. Yeah, so and uh, the last one is the potential to integrate the uh, bound safety proposal from, the, from Apple into GCC. So that's uh, maybe discussed later. Yeah, I think. Yeah, think Bill. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so uh, I'm going to give a quick uh, breakdown of where we are with Clang. Um, basically, I'm going to say a lot of ditto <laughs> to what GCC is doing because we're we're trying to make the implementations um, identical. Uh, when, uh, we're one small step ahead of GCC at the moment where um, we're able to do a, a built-in dynamic object size on the whole array, uh, not just simply like the uh, sub-object, the, the flexible array. Um, but we, we do also have the same uh, data dependency issue that we're going to have to address um, but we're, uh, uh, you know, uh, once they um, hammer out the exact, um, uh, you know, solution on GCC, we'll be able to uh, create a, a very similar solution in uh, Um it, uh, These next slides are just going to go through some of, you know, what we, what you can do right now with Top of Tree. Uh, this is a reminder of um, King's uh, uh, a header file slide with some of it slightly redacted. Um, and so for an out of bounds uh, uh, error, uh, such as this, when we're trying to, uh, when you have the um, sanitizer uh, uh, implemented, which I don't have on that command line, um, then it will um, throw a, uh, um, undefined behavior sanitizer error. Um, that in after that is um, a bit of a bug, uh, but anyway, so. Uh, and for obviously just, you know, getting the size of the flexible array member, um, we're able to uh, calculate the uh, dynamic object size of that. Um, so it uh, correctly brings back 10 um, to get uh, like, the object size of an index into the, or the array so that, you know, whatever is left of that, we can also do that uh, given the pointer to it. Um, and if you go outside of the uh, bounds, then it will return zero, um, which is perfectly fine and exactly what we want with built-in dynamic object size. Um, and uh, like I said, this is just the one step um, ahead that we are. Um, it's not super exciting, but we're, you know, if you have a pointer to the entire structure, then we're able to generate the, uh, that, that code for you or that size for you. 
Um, so, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the data dependency workaround that GCC is uh, uh, currently hammering out, um, we're going to adopt that, uh, you know, when we can. Um, the, the future work, and actually, you know, some of the reasons why, oh, sorry. Yeah, so on the previous I get the, slide. There's a, there's a, there a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody at home, we're so sorry. <laughs> I think so. Cool. Um, I recall in one of the previous slides when King was presenting that the count had to be at least the size of the possible array number. So, does that built in dynamic object size tell you how much is remaining in the entire array as it was allocated or up until count? Up until count. Okay. Um, so, for um, Let's see. This one here is what we are talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, everything, uh, because we don't have the information uh, from the malloc, the original malloc carried through, uh, the, it's like alloc size uh, is the attribute information that um, uh, can be used. Well, since that's not carried through, um, you know, past the function boundary. Um, we the only thing that we can rely on with the built-in dynamic object size is the count uh, that's specified with that uh, counted by attribute. Um, so yeah, for this, uh, if um, somebody had modified uh, uh, p at this point and said that count was 120, um, this would have returned 117 uh, for the size. So. Um, so one of the um, uh, things that we would really love to have happen is um, to implement uh, some of the features that Apple had um, uh, created an RFC for. And they've had this uh, working um, bounds checking uh, or bounds safety um, stuff for quite a while now, over at least over a year, and certainly more. Um, however, kind of like how Smog sits on a pile of gold, they haven't yet um, uh, released it to uh, the public. So we, this is why uh, King and I have started kind of, you know, doing our own implementations of some of this stuff. Um, here are a few of the, uh, listed out here are a few of the, uh, attributes and differences that you know these that apple has uh created um you know like a pointer to a single object and you can specify the attribute single to it so if you try and do um uh like pointer arithmetic on such an object you'll get an error because it's only supposed to be one single object that you've uh, created there um the external bounds annotations like um, counted by, sized by, which are very similar and ended by. Um, these are for like, if you are passing a raw pointer into a uh, function, you can say this pointer is counted by this other field or this other parameter um, in this uh, function and it will act in a very similar way to the counted by that uh, King and I created. Um, and size by is like counted by, but it will return bytes instead of, um, instead of just the element count. Uh, and ended by, as you can imagine, is just like, oh, this is, this is the end of, uh, of the, uh, the array. Um, they also have an implementation for internal bounds annotations, uh, and those are, um, fat pointers, but we don't fat shame, so Rubenesque. Um, and they basically, uh, the pointer itself is, uh, it will, is kind of like a small little structure with the begin and end, uh, um, you know, specifically specified within there. And they have bi-directional iterator, uh, iterators are indexable and uh, regular indexable is just, just uh, one uh, direction. Um, uh, 
Uh, also, Sentinel delimited uh, arrays, um, like null terminated and terminated by some other value. And then finally, uh, um, unsafe indexable, which is just like regular C um, arrays. Uh, but they they have they've already um, uh, used this uh, internally at uh, Apple, and like we said, we're just kind of you know chomping at the bit to to get it and implement it into our stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, uh, this is something that uh, we've we've. Wanted like when they when they announced it, everybody was like, "Can we have this yesterday, please?" <laughs> and so yeah, that's it's kind of uh, uh, something that we'd really really like to have happen. Uh, and once the slides go out, you can uh, this is a link to the RFC, so you can get a lot more information for that. So. Um, we think so. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure that they've come up with uh, the question was, um, or the uh, observation was that uh, these all have the same data dependency um, issues. And um, we uh, imagine that um, uh, Apple has uh, addressed them and had run across the same issues. But again, we don't have their code to look at. so. Um, it, it's quite possible that they didn't uh, consider it, uh, and there there may still be a data dependency issue there, um, but it, it's unknown at this moment. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, like like I said, I was just it was just going to be a very brief update, um, and uh, uh, a lot of the stuff had already been done by King, so. Um, I will give it uh, back to King and um, uh, so that you can talk a little bit more about uh, you know, some of the other stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, case instead of King. <laughs> um, yeah, these, these next two slides are sort of, we've already, um, it's just a sort of looking at the bound safety work and giving more context for, for where it could get used in, in stuff outside the kernel. Like, kernel doesn't have VLAs at all, so we don't care. Um, but uh, talking about extending this to the pointers as well as the fans. So those are a little bit redundant. And then again, thinking about what work we're going to have to do in the kernel to deal with this, there's quite a bit of effort to adopt the, the bound safety stuff because we're going to have to change a lot of proposals or, or uh, change a lot of the prototypes to match the stuff that's in the proposal. Um, so on we go. Um, so switching uh, back to a little bit out of, of the like array bounds, but generalized array bounds, uh, there's just a couple of little open issues. Um, so uh, Clang still has to fix dealing with nested structures. So if you have a flexible array member in a structure contained in a structure, um, some of the internals sort of don't notice that it ends in a flexible array. Uh, and this was very recently fixed in GCC, and it's getting fixed in Clang. Um, dealing with, uh, we talked about uh, value range checking. Uh, uh, GCC still emits uh, false positives with dash W array bounds. Uh, this is mostly an artifact of jump threading and sort of confuses the internals. Um, there is an open bug. Uh, King has a proposal on how that could get fixed. Um, and then there's talking about uh, from, a, from a larger perspective, dealing with uh, flexible arrays and unions are technically not allowed by the standard as it stands. Um, so if you had this code, you had a union with a flexible array at the end, in the past, using the GNU extension, you could you know, specify it as a zero-sized array and it would be treated like a flexible array. But if you actually remove that zero, suddenly your code doesn't compile anymore uh, because a true flexible array is not allowed to exist in a union but of course it, it can and has because both compilers can handle this without any problem. Um, it's just, oh, if it's a true flexible array, you're not supposed to be in a union, but this is used in lots of places in the kernel. Um, it's a common problem. We, uh, yes. So do you need this independently or do you need this? So do you need this feature independently or do you need it as part of this 
Uh, it, as it's traditionally part of the script. Um, so like it ends with union. Um, that that may be true, but it doesn't compile. Like it, it's it. No, I mean, I'm saying yeah. the, the the objection that you have is that there is a thread should probably not hold for uh, when the union is part of this. Okay. We should we should probably just fix that. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, there there's a bunch of cases in the kernel where you have a union where it's basically doing a uh, it's the fam is being treated as a catch-all. So there's a union of a whole bunch of structures. And above that union, it's like, this is the type that actually exists here. So all the code picks which structure they want to use, but occasionally they're like, eh, let's just treat it like a byte array. So now there's a fam in that union, and that's illegal. Like, it, it won't compile. Um, but if you said zero, it builds, and you're fine. So there's an inconsistency here, and it's mostly due to the fact that flexible arrays are like literally one sentence in a footnote of the C standard, and people have to decide how to interpret it. So we just need to explicitly allow this. Uh, we can work around this in the kernel right now by wrapping it in a structure, um, which is just this horrible mess, but eh, don't look. Yeah, it's very gross. Yeah. Um, and then trying to cram this quickly into two minutes. Um, the next big piece I want to work on compiler-wise is arithmetic overflow protection, and we have this problem uh, of sort of a, a language confusion between overflow, which is a well-defined thing, uh, and wraparound, which is the two's complement result of an overflow. Um, and, and they're different things, but from the kernel perspective, we don't care it wrapped around. That's usually bad. Um, except when we're expecting it to wrap around. Uh, so we actually need to depend on the dash F no strict overflow so that the compiler doesn't remove all the impossible things. Um, but we want to find all the places where we're depending on a wrap around uh, so we can explicitly allow them. And then all the other places in the kernel, we can actually trap when there's arithmetic overflow. Or um, so this is, there's some discussion ongoing about this, but I'm hoping we can start to make some progress in the next year on this. Uh, and if people can jump in and help, that would be awesome. Um, I think that's the end. Sorry, we're just gonna get feedback for this thing. It's good. Anyway, any any questions, comments? Yes. Quick comment. The another thing you mentioned to fix the data dependency issue. Yeah. That's going to fix the inline issue. Oh, good. That's good. Yeah. We, that's good. There was a there was a bug with inlining. So some of the, yeah, uh, like alloc size, where you you perform a malloc and it would, you know, you, you'd actually wrap your malloc in a, an inline test, function. Test, so test. Like my special malloc as an inline, suddenly the alloc size information vanished. Uh, didn't make any sense, but sort of looking at the internals, we're like, okay, I'll see why, but now sure. we're going to solve a whole bunch of interesting problems with this, which is nice. And we can reuse it for general pointers as well. So that's it. Anything else? All right. I think we got one minute, 30 seconds for questions here. Any parting thoughts? I've got one. Um, earlier on, you said shadow stacks on x86, and no one had looked into it. We have. Um, it doesn't work. In the kernel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Peter and I did a lot of this whilst we were doing the indirect branch tracking. Okay. Uh, basically, you can't have it until Fred comes along in CPUs. There are too many corner cases where you, things Linux has to do to work around hardware yeah. bugs means it doesn't work that, properly. That was sort of what I was implying. Like, it's, it's yeah. a terrible mess right now. And it doesn't, yeah, I, I should probably strengthen my language and describe that was it does not look possible right now. <laughs> Because yeah, it, 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 it's hard. Yeah. All right, let's give a round of applause for our speakers. Thanks, everyone.